IWC emailed and asked if I wanted to check out a prototype of a new watch. I said, yeah, please. So let's see what they've sent. Welcome back to Barking Jack, I am Adrian, and this channel is just about me drinking coffee, talking watches, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. And more specifically, talking about an IWC prototype. So this is kind of a reissue. They call it a tribute to the 1994 Black Flieger, the reference 3705. This isn't gonna be a review, this is kind of just gonna be a checking it out video. And I've only got this for a few days, so it's, it's not really long enough for me to really uh, pass much of a comment, but it kind of sounded like an interesting thing to play with. So that's what we're doing. We're just checking it out. Right off the bat, you can see this is a chunky little thing. Let's compare it to ever so slightly thicker than the Seamust. That's a chunky beast. So the original watch that was launched in 1994, the reference 3705, that was a black ceramic watch. This is now IWC's updated kind of material of that. This is what they call serotanium. It's a mixture of titanium and ceramic. They call it, well they say it has a strength of titanium, but the scratch resistance of ceramic. Because this is a prototype, this isn't the final production version. This is pre-production. Things aren't quite right with this watch. They've been very open. They've already highlighted the imperfections or issues with this watch. Um, and that's uh, understandable that this isn't the sellable thing. So the specs on this thing, we have a 41 millimeter wide case. It's 15.3 millimeters thick, so this is a chunky, chunky beast. Compared to the Seamaster, which is my other chunky watch, that's 13.7 millimeters thick. That's a thick watch. This is even thicker at 15.3 millimeters thick. We have three bar of water resistance, so 30 meters of water resistance. It's a chronograph though, so you don't really want to go underwater just in case you hit one of those pushes. We have a dome sapphire crystal, which has anti-reflection material on the top and bottom. We have rhodium hands and then white painted numerals, white painted everything. And that's, uh, I really like that high contrast, the high contrast black dial with whiteness. I think that's, that's really very cool. The movement inside is an in-house caliber movement, caliber 69380. It's a column rule chronograph movement that beats at 28,800 vibrations an hour, has a bi-directional winding rotor, 33 joules, and a power reserve of 46 hours. Now this is a limited edition. It's limited to 1,000 pieces, and you can only get it from a handful of places. IWC.com is gonna be the main one. Initial thoughts on it, uh, it and it's hard really to, to talk about it because it's, it's, this is an unfinished piece. Uh, but I really like the, the feel of this material, this serotanium. It's got a real nice military feel about it. And if this is as strong as these guys claim it to be, then uh, it's not going to chip off and it shouldn't really scratch. I'm not going to test it. I've always liked pilot watches. I've, I've done a couple of videos on IWC pilot watches and I think they're great. The only thing that I would change about this watch, if this was an IWC Bark and Jack watch, would be the hands. Those hands feel unnecessarily shiny. They are reflecting everything. Uh, when you look at it, they reflect your face color. Um, and so you have this black dial, white everything, and then pink. Uh, and, and so I, I would have just had a matte. Actually, I would have gone with white hands. I think that would look awesome, or at least brushed hands. Uh, but regardless, I really like how exact everything is on this dial. 15 millimeters is a very, very tall watch, especially a watch that doesn't have a bezel that you need to interact with. I feel like if you have a bezel that you need to interact with, then you can kind of excuse the height of the watch because you need to have something physical to get your hands on and move around at the same time as having space to have the crown and everything else on it. So I feel like that's all quite excusable. But when it's something like a chronograph where you don't need to interact with a bezel, it's just there, you have the interaction on the sides. I, I kind of feel like I would really like that to be shallower. This does actually wear quite well. It might be because it's black and, and therefore it's quite slimming to the watch. It's a chunky watch, it is a chunky watch, but there's something about the blackness that just makes it wear very well. The only other thing that I'd change with it is is the strap. I, I feel like this is a very military looking style watch and I feel like um, the leather strap, although it is a nice leather strap, uh, not as nice as a Bark and Jack leather strap, but it's still a nice leather strap uh, nonetheless. I feel like this aesthetic would suit something like 
a, a sailcloth strap, a NATO strap, certainly the NATO straps that we have over at barkandjack.shop. The black tubular strap that we have would suit this down to the ground, or maybe just get it on a gray NATO strap and that might lighten it up a bit and also blend those hands into something gray. This is an interesting piece and it's launched today on the 25th of February. Let me know in the comments what you think down below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, hit the subscribe button down there and a little bell icon so you get notifications when I drop a new video. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Bark and Jack. And if you want to check out the watch straps and watch accessories, jump over to BarkandJack.com. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.